Hello everyone, this is Stephen Barlow, Technology Librarian at the Mandel Public Library, and I'm here with another DIY digital project for you. This one's a bit different from the last few weeks that I've been doing. Uh, I want to show you how to do some pixel art and more importantly, animating pixel art and making a sprite. There's lots of fun things you can do with these little sprites. It's basically making your own GIF. So today what I will be using is a cool program called Piscal, and you can find that at www.piscalapp.com. Now this is a free online and quite powerful application. And you can sign in, uh, create a gallery of a bunch of things and be able to go back and edit it and download it. And if you sign in, you will be using your uh, Google sign in if you have a Google account. If you don't want to do that or if you're worried about privacy, they also have the ability to just let you create a sprite without any sign in. You can create that sprite, download it, but once you close out, that sprite is uh, gone forever. So it's really great to be able to try out and not have to worry about you know uh, giving up any of your information. So let's go ahead and get started. So for now, let me just sign in real quick. All right, so this is what it looks like if you do sign in with your Google account. What I am going to show you how to animate is just a simple fireworks. It's it's fairly easy to do. You can do it with uh, well relatively quickly, depending on how much detail you want to put into it. Because the cool thing with pixel art is if you keep it small, it can be really fast to do, but you can actually get it really large and high definition, and you can really create some like really beautiful things and really detailed things with pixel art. It all depends on what you want to do. So as I said, we'll just be working with fireworks and let me just show you what we'll be doing. This is just a little one I created. So I'm going to start a new one and I will create a background just to show you uh, how some of the tools work. But feel free if you do it yourself to not use a background because if you, do, if you don't use a background, then it will be transparent which is better for something like a website or a video game. But for this, I thought it was cool to just make a nice little background and it's a good way to show you some of the tools. So let's go ahead and get started. For that, I will simply create Sprite. So here we are in our work area. In the center, of course, is where we'll be doing our art. And off to the side here on the left side we have several handy tools and i'll be showing you how to use some of those and over on the right side is where we will deal with uh, layers and we'll just be dealing a little bit with layers only if you're using something like a, uh, a background like I will be showing you how to make, it's good to create a separate layer for your fireworks so that you're not having to try and change the background as well as the firework, because that's a lot extra uh, work for you in the details. But if you're not using a background, then you probably won't need to worry about layers too much unless you know, you have multiple fireworks and they are overlapping, then once again, it's good to go into layers. But we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. And of course, up at the top here, a nice little preview, which comes in handy once you actually start animating. First, I'm going to change the size of my canvas here in the center, give it a little bit more definition. Uh, more pixels. So for that, I'm going to go over to this little toolbar on the farthest right hand side where you'll see preferences, resize, save, export, and import. So I'm going to go to resize. 
you can see here the default size is 32 by 32. I'm going to change mine, make it just a bit bigger, up to 75. And I'm going to hit maintain aspect ratio just so it's the same for both the width and the height. So now I will hit resize button. And now you might not be able to tell, tell here, but my pixel art is just a little bit bigger. And maybe if you look at it, you can see my little pixel in the center is now a bit smaller than it was. Because at 32, the pixels are bigger because you have less pixels. Now, let's start with our background. This can be really easy if you want to make a background like I did before. So that's basically what I will show you now. So to do that, a nice uh, night background with just a luminous uh, ground. First, I will make the night. So I'm going to go over here to the Paint Bucket tool. That just fills in the entire uh, canvas with one color. So now, as you can see, we have a fully black background. And now to change the color, you've got your, you'll see you have your two squares here. You've got your primary and your secondary, and your secondary, as you can see, is the, the transparent. I'm just going to go ahead to my primary, and you can see my color palette comes up here. I'm just going to go to the opposite side, and we'll make some little pixel stars. Make sure to go back up to the pin tool. That is your default tool. So you can see it does save your um, colors off to the side, like the last color you used, and also over here in the palette on the right-hand side, uh, your colors will also slowly get saved there as well to go back and use. There we go. That's not bad. One more for good measure. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try and make our ground. See, now you can see when I, once I used my white, now it saves over here in my current colors under palettes. So let's see here. I'm going to go, last time I went for kind of a bluish color. This time maybe I'll go for like a dark green. Let's see how that looks. Maybe about right there. And you can also use the color picker if you've got another color around that you want to borrow. Like if you ex or imported something in and you want to use a color from that imported object. But let's try this. So now I'm just going to draw this out. That's not bad. Maybe want it a little bit darker. So, so that I don't have to try and redraw everything over, I can actually go back up to my, uh, I can go to this one that looks like kind of a spiral, paint all pixels of the same color. So if I do this, there, now it's darker. See, now if I tried to use that down here, it would then turn every single black one uh, this dark green, but we don't want that. Now we'll go back to the paint bucket tool and draw within the border that we made here. And there, now we've got a nice dark green ground. Of course, I want to add just a little bit of shading here. And if you want to do shading, like a quick, easy way to do shading, there's this awesome lighten tool that you can click. And as you can see, it tells you if you hold the control key down, then it'll darken it. And if you hold the shift key down, it will apply only once per pixel, which means if you hold this over one pixel, it'll steadily get darker or steadily get lighter up until the point where it's you know white or black. But if you don't want it to go that much, then you can hold the shift key down and it'll only change one shade. I think that looks pretty good. So now I've just done some quick shading.
to give it a little bit more of a dark kind of tone to it. And that also helps, you know, if you want to do the fireworks and add extra lighting to your ground, you can go through the individual frames and add more light to make it look like it's lighting up the ground, if you want. It's all the little details you can add if you like. So now we have created our background. Now it's time to start making our firework. For this, we are going to start looking at the layers. You can see the little layers box over here in the right-hand side. So I am first for best practices. I'm gonna go ahead and rename my current layer one. You can do that by hitting the pin. And I'm just going to call it background and hit enter. Now, so that we can make our fire work accurately without messing up our original background, I'm going to hit the plus button here, but I'm actually going to hold down the shift key so that it clones my current layer. So now I have a clone of my original background on top of my current so that I don't mess the original up. Okay, so Let's get started. To create this animation, we're going to need to add extra frames. We're not going to actually add a new frame. We're going to, once again, just make a copy of our original. So for that, you'll go up to your first frame, and you'll see one on top of the other, These two little, this little two paper icon. If you hit that, that will just clone or make a copy of your first frame. So now in the second frame, we'll get to drawing. I've already got red selected down here. So I'm just going to stick with red. It's a popular firework color. And I'm just going to start drawing it. Oh, make sure your pin tool is selected. I'm just going to start drawing it right above my hilt there. And you can see this fast blinking thing uh, that is my... Um, my two frames repeating over and over, so you'll see that flashing bit there. It'll look better as we go along. So that's the first. Now we're just going to copy our second. I like to do it this way so that I can just kind of follow the trail up. And now just to add in a little bit extra effect, you can see it's slowly shooting up now, but I also want to have it trail off a bit. You can just delete this bottom bit, but I like to use the lighten tool, hold down control and actually darken this up so that it creates a little bit of a fade effect. And from here, it's just a matter of rinse and repeat. Just use the pen tool and darken and then add more frames. And there you go. Looks a little bit strange at 12 frames per second, but if you slow that down to about maybe nine frames per second, that looks pretty nice. And you've got it. This is just a really simple firework. Of course, you can add more in here. You can add an extra layer and do one on top of the other. And yes. That is a simple firework. As I said, you can add in as much detail as you like. You can really go crazy with the lightning. As I said, you can also add lighting effects down here onto your, uh, your hill. Of course, once again, this is much easier to do if uh, you're not putting in the background, because then you can just go crazy with the fireworks themselves. But as a finale, let me just show you how to get this exported. Now that I'm here, I can go over to my buttons over here on this far right hand side. You'll see an export button. Hit that. Now you can see you can scale it up, scale it down. You can make it a GIF, a PNG, a zip, or an other. GIF is generally the best because that way you've got a nice, it's nice and animated. 
So I'm just going to download as an animated GIF. Hit that. And now I'll just open it up and you can take a look. So you can see it's still quite small, but it would work very well as a, uh, as a little icon, perhaps by your name in an email or just something that you can uh, send people in instant messenger. Anyway, that is how to make a very simple firework. Uh, of course, you can do this at home by yourself on your own computer, but I recommend it helps out a lot if you have a drawing tablet. So feel free to come in to Digital Studio 4. We have our giant drawing tablet that you can try out. And it really helps out a lot, especially when you're just trying to do the little details or just doing something really quickly. Having the pin and everything helps out a lot. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on Piskel, and I hope you give it a shot. Thank you very much, and have a great day.